welcome to the Simple Steps Personal Finance Podcast, bringing personal finance to you step by step. This is episode 10. Thank you for listening. Before we start, I just want to remind you of my Christmas offer. My starter package cost has been reduced by 20%. That's three 90-minute coaching sessions with two bonus 45-minute catch-ups for a one-off cost of £200. The coaching sessions can be performed over Skype or FaceTime, making them as convenient for you as possible. By organising your finances and improving your relationship with money, the coaching pays for itself. This episode is the 10th podcast, and to mark the occasion, I want to show you how far we've come together. I also want to set out a vision for how this podcast will move on from here. Now that I've outlined an approach to personal finance that I am certain will improve your control over your own money, enhance your interaction with money, and give you a better relationship with your money. The path of the last nine episodes has been one that has set foundations of how to frame your financial picture and judge where it sits in relation to improvement over your lifetime, how your personal finances can be better structured to help your daily life, and why making certain behaviours automatic will lead to wealth over the long term. So what tools did I give you to do this? Firstly, we talked about having a good enough reason to want to make changes in your life and not only make changes but to force them through by the power of that initial motivation, to then take this change and make it permanent. That reason you have, that's your why. It may be born from the love of your children and creating a better future for them. It may be a desire to help other family members, your friends, or just to improve your own circumstances. Whatever your why is, that's your motivation to change, and you need to know this before you're able to act. Because the next question is, what do I have to do? And you won't know what you need to do until you know why you are doing it. Why do I need to fix my finances to not be broke anymore? What do I need to do? Plan my spending intentionally and hit my goals. So that was our first lesson. Why and what? Motivation and habit. Secondly, I talked you through my seven simple steps framework. Let's recap quickly. Simple step one, find out where your money goes and create a spending plan. Simple step two, put £1,000 into a rainy day fund. Simple step three, pay off debts in order of smallest first. Simple step four, top up your rainy day fund to four to six months of living expenses. Simple step four and a half, save for a deposit on a house. Simple step five, invest 15% of household income for your future and that of your children. Simple step six, pay off your house. Simple step seven, aim for financial independence. Hearing those steps again after nine podcasts should be a different experience for you. I think you'll see the path through life that would happen with these steps much more clearly this time. The deliberate desire to get you on an even keel, pay off high interest, short term debt, which is robbing you of your income, Put money into savings for potential emergencies. Then look to secure your old age and be the owner of your home outright, possibly eliminating the need to work at all before retirement comes around. Now, it's hard to argue with that journey. So the Simple Steps framework gives you a yardstick to refer to, to judge your current position and give you a future pathway. It's theoretical, yet practically achievable. Broad in scope, yet narrow enough for you to carry it out. Thirdly, we look at an approach I like to refer to myself as the ABC of money. I don't refer to it as that to you, but in my mind, it helps me remember what to look at practically when faced with someone else's financial picture. If the simple steps are the theoretical framework to base your journey on at intervals in your life, then the ABC is the day-to-day approach. So what is the ABC I keep talking about here? A, A stands for accounts. I spent a few episodes talking to you about how to build a financial blueprint, a set of accounts that make your daily life a stress-free and anxiety-free, problem-free, unlimited money extravaganza. 
well, three out of four of those anyway, by separating bills from daily spending cash, setting up accounts for savings for anticipated stuff and general future purposes, to retirement saving. The key to juggling lots of plates is to not have to juggle lots of plates. The more plates, the more smashes. One plate, no smash. So we use one account for daily spending, a grown-up version of pocket money. Guilt-free, stress-free spending. And bill paying is kept separate, taking advantage of automatic payments to keep everything self-managing. The final benefit of this account approach is the ability to pay yourself first, to be able to add fake bills to the list of monthly expenses so that we meet our future goals. Automatic savings, automatic investment, And can we make any money from our approach? Better interest rate, cashback bonuses. It's all about the right account for the right job. B. B stands for bills. Putting money away for rainy days, saving for long-term purchases or upcoming birthdays, it's hard to do when you spend all that you earn. So we need to strip away as much of our monthly expense as we can. Like a sculptor removes clay to create art, not adding more and more to make it better. We take the same approach with our bills. We strip away excess spending, look for better deals for the same or a lower cost, strive to spend less on our needs so we can spend more on our wants. After just a few years out of school, you'll have monthly bills. After you buy a home or have children, the list of bills might look like an Andrex advert. Just your long paper line isn't as cute as the one that the puppy was dragging along. So we push emotion to one side and we slice away at these bills. Freeing up money now gives us a grey area to build our financial futures from. C. C is for cash cards. Your aim is to live by a spending plan each month designed by your own hand. It covers your needs for the month. It secures another glimmer of your future. It caters to your, your wants for the following few weeks. This heroic undertaking is all that stands between you and financial greatness. Yet, alas, is my perfect plan flawed somehow? The Achilles heel of any spending plan is the card. The plastic card, the credit card, the debit card, the chip and pin, the contactless wave for anything under £20. Spend a little money on stuff that you didn't plan. It'll rock your plans, but you'll survive. Spend all of your money without a plan, and it'll rock things to their very core. Cash cards are a hugely convenient tool, but when you're trying to turn good finances into a habit, they can be your unseen enemy, causing death by a thousand cuts. So keep an eye on them. Spend only as you have planned. Even swap over to proper cash for the first few months to re-establish that forgotten pain of letting £10 and £20 notes leave your grasp. So that's my ABC. Accounts, bills, cards. Armed with the seven simple steps framework and the ABC of daily life, you have everything you need to be well underway on your journey to improving your finances. These two sides of the same coin, they're enough to keep you ahead of 90% of the other players in the game. You can live intentionally, propelled by your money, not held back by it. With a clear understanding of how to structure your life to keep anxiety low and fulfilment high. How do we go that extra mile though? Be better than 99% of the others, not just 90%. Well, you're already doing it. This is the 10th episode of this podcast. I've been talking in your ear and you've been taking it in. Where I come from, folks call that learning. Financial education is the real financial advice. Give a man a fish, as they say. By investing your time into learning approaches to money, a framework to your finances, and spending your time reducing your living costs, hunting for better deals and setting up a smoother, behaviour-improving account layout, you've really been paying yourself to be the salesman. You've been educating yourself and then finding the best deals. After all, personal finance isn't difficult. If it is, chances are someone's trying to pull the wool over your eyes. Learn the options and apply them yourself. Knowledge means power in this murky money world. And that's how you will continue to excel. Learn. Don't obsess over negative risks and outcomes. A balanced point of view comes from having knowledge. This podcast will continue to provide personal finance one bite at a time, unbiased and helping you to help yourself. The internet has lots of good resources. The more knowledgeable you become, the easier it will be for you to weed out the con artists, the fake promises, the flawed logic. 
Money is easy. If someone convinces you that you're not smart enough to understand it, they're selling you a lie. When you're watching the news and they report the third financial meltdown of the month, that we'll all be living in caves and killing animals in the woods by May, your knowledge will tell you that these negative risks aren't the real focus. That the long-term picture is much different than short-term sensationalism. So by simply being in the game, listening to podcasts, controlling your own money, managing your own financial life, you are learning. I hope this podcast and my simple steps have had a hand in your learning, a journey we have started together through money. For me to do that, this podcast cannot continue to map out approaches to accounts and bill savings. We all share the same goals when you look at our financial pictures, but stir into them a little deeply and our individual circumstances start to separate us. So I don't want to create episodes that talk only to a few of you each time. I want to create episodes that continue informing and building on our knowledge more and more. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change the direction of the podcast ever so slightly. It'll still sound the same, but there'll be a few more stops along the way before we reach our destination. From now on then, each episode will look to focus on a specific thing, be that a financial product like loans, mortgages, credit cards, or a financial concept like compound interest, debt reduction, regular saving, and giving you simple definitions of all those clever things the supposed experts talk about. Every week we'll learn something new, something to complement what we already know and give us the tools we need to keep one step ahead of everyone else. To keep us away from the normals with their debts and their overspending, and over here with the weirds, all debt-free, happy and prosperous. Bite-sized nuggets of simple information to keep you moving on. Before I wrap up this episode and finish my look back and look forward at the Simple Steps Personal Finance Podcast, I'd like to mention the new year. Now, the traditional resolutions at this time of year are often in one of two areas, health and finances. For this upcoming year, let me suggest one for you. To control your money. Simple step one, live by a plan. Live intentionally financially. And I bet it'll cross over into other aspects of your life. Soon you'll be enjoying yourself intentionally, working intentionally, traveling intentionally, living intentionally. Money is the web that holds on to every aspect of our lives, whether we like it or not. This year, we're going to hold it to account instead. I want your resolution to last more than the usual fortnight too. So here are a couple of yardsticks you can use to keep your foot on the pedal. I want you to use this January to November to put some money aside as a slush fund for all those irregular bills throughout the year, like car insurance, birthdays, Christmas. We've a big window of time to build up a bucket of cash. When our money runs dry, we can dip into the bucket. When there's money left over, put it in the bucket for later. And one other task. I want you to take one hour out of each month to reassess an area of your finances to see if you're still getting the best deal. Mobile phones, TV packages, insurance, bank account interest, wherever it may be. Pick one each month, maybe time to when the contracts expire naturally. But pick one each month and look to squeeze it for all it's worth. And that's where I'm going to leave it this time on the SSBF podcast. Many thanks to all of you for listening to this podcast since it started. I hope I've continued to help you. Please keep referring the SSPF way to your friends and family. Let's keep those audience figures growing ever higher every month. There'll be plenty more to come from me in the coming months. In the meantime, though, don't let money worries rule your thinking over the festive period. So... Season's greetings, happy new year, enjoy yourself, go live life to its fullest. Thanks for listening, that's it for episode 10. For more information check out sspf.co.uk Thanks as always to partners in mind for the music used throughout this broadcast. See you next time.